Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. About an hour ago, my Lisa Eldridge order arrived. So I've got the Enlivening Blush, I have the Elevated Glow Highlight, I have the Gloss Embrace, and then one of the new Luxuriously Lucent Lipsticks. And a few other little newer products I'm gonna sprinkle into this video. If you enjoy this video, I would greatly appreciate if you give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel as it helps my channel grow so more people can find my content. So let's jump right into our video. So we are going to be talking about my new order from Lisa Eldridge. This is my first order from her brand. In the past, there was the lipsticks and the lip glosses. I was curious to try them out, but I wasn't ready for duties. I feel like here in Canada, we get hit really hard when it comes to duty and import fees. So I'm just gonna share with you real quick how much everything cost, what it was for the conversion, what it was for duties. Because if you're in Canada or another country where you feel like you get hit by duties, that's a good thing to note. So for the products I ordered and the little makeup bag was like a free gift with purchase. It was 95 British pounds which on my credit card statement that converted to $167.31 Canadian. And then when DHL sent me my kind of customs fee, that was $51.34 Canadian. So um, pricey, but you know what? Lisa does skin so well and I needed these. So I bit the bullet. Got, I think two and a half layers of the Anessa. I love this sunscreen because I can just, I, I just apply it. Like I know the two finger length method is normal, the standard application, but this is just so beautiful and elegant and plays so well with makeup. Sometimes I apply a little bit extra. So I've got quite a bit of this on my face, neck and ears. First thing I wanna play with is the Elevated Glow. I was kind of torn between Crystal Nebula and Shade Up Like rose something. I decided to go with the lighter shade because if I like it, I can always go back and order more. So I don't know how this is going to apply. Oh, instead of taking it straight from the doe foot to that, I'm going to put it on back of my hand and work from there. And I'm just going to use my fingers. Now, Lisa did say this has Film Excel, which is a bipolymer. I'm not overly familiar with that. These more like cosmetic based ingredients. I... I'm not that well versed in it, so I cannot speak to any ingredients, but she described it. It kind of reminded me of the way, in one of her early videos, when I first found her channel, she talked about the Beauty Flash Balm, I believe, is what it's called by Clarins, and how it had like a polymer that kind of did a tightening effect. That immediately made me think about this. When Lisa was describing the product for the skincare benefits, she said if you want like a little bit of like a lifting, tightening, smoothing effect, apply it for about three minutes, let it set on the skin, and then go on with your foundation on top. I'm not really going for a lot of like tightening on my nose or my chin. I like to highlight these areas before I put any type of foundation or base product on. Sometimes I like for, especially for my everyday, and today is an everyday where I've just got stuff around the house to do, I don't like a glittery or shimmery highlight. It has this really kind of elegant silicone slippery feel like, oh, oh, oh. Let me come in closer. So I don't know if you can see, but like looking in my mirror where I've applied this highlight compared to the other areas of my skin where I didn't apply the highlight, it's really, really softened the appearance of my pores, even down the center of my nose. So when I flip over to the magnifying side of my mirror, you can see what looks like a tiny bit of a shimmer. Nothing crazy, but I mean, even if I, not even like half an arm length away in the mirror, I can't see any type of shimmer. So from normal length or from standard mirror length, you can't really see anything. You just see this kind of glow that I hope is coming across on camera. I want this to kind of sink in, the benefit of that tightening and lifting. I'm just gonna prep my lips. This is a newer one. So this is the Laneige Lip Glowy Balm, a shade or scent berry. It has that kind of silicone-y, slippy feel 
that the lip sleeping mask does. However, it's not as heavy. So while we're letting that sit in, I'm gonna go ahead and do eyes. Eyes are gonna be pretty basic. Get Paracone MD, no eyeshadow eyeshadow. I've not been able to find this in Canada. I got it last time I was in the US at Ulta. Eldridge talked about it in her like a secret skincare video as it was just like that perfect no eyeshadow eyeshadow very much looked like skin but it just kind of perfected and gave a little bit of a tint to the skin which is what i love slightly darker and slightly warmer than my skin tone while it doesn't really give coverage to the eye area adds a subtle tint to neutralize any of the discoloration on the eyes it still very much looks like skin. Here it is with the shadow versus without. It still has the same texture on this side with the shadow as the side without shadow. It just kind of beautifies the eyelids. You can see how it shows up on my eyelids. I feel like this is very limited as far as the skin tones it will work on. I don't really see it working on anyone over a medium skin tone and maybe not even medium. It's definitely, if you have anything over a kind of light medium skin tone, I would definitely swatch it before you buy it just because I don't want you to buy something that might not show up on your skin tone. If you want something that's similar but a little bit more easily accessible, then there is the MAC Pro Longwear Paint Pot and Groundwork. They recently expanded the shade selection. Now there's so many colors and these do have a little bit more of an opacity compared to the Paracone. Really shear these out to look like a wash of natural, perfected color on the eyelids. I love these. Right here, like I do get Botox and that helps to soften the look, but I still have some fine lines that show around like the crow's feet area. And I feel like the highlight by giving it time to set has really kind of tightened and smoothed the look of the area. I don't know if I really feel like a lifting through the brow area, but the softening of like the crow's feet, the softening of the appearance of my pores, huge, huge this plus. The new La Roche Posay Enthelios Mineral One 50 Plus UV Plus UVA Protection. And I believe this came in four or five shades. I grabbed the shade Light One. You're using it as a standalone, and you're gonna follow that two finger metric. I feel like you can go through it pretty fast. This is only 30 mil of product. So I'm gonna start on my cheek area. She's got coverage. If you watch my other videos, you know I don't take foundation under my eyes, but since this does have sun protection and it's a mineral only, um, I will like that extra protection under my eyes. I love this. I'll have to get up close afterwards and look in my mirror to see if it looks good up close. In terms of tinted sunscreens, especially if they have more of this kind of like luminosity to them, they can really look kind of cloggy and heavy and emphasize pore size. But sunscreens are also a weird one because as they kind of warm up and melt into the skin, they kind of smooth out. So we'll just have to see how this looks. Right now, I'm not being overly careful to blend. If you watch me talk about sunscreen, sunscreen application, I don't like to manipulate it too much. I want to kind of break up the kind of film that creates your protection. So when I'm looking up close, I can definitely see this sitting on top of my skin. It's kind of, let me come in closer. Can you see, it's just kind of like, setting in my pores. Since I've already got sunscreen under this one, I'm just gonna use a kind of foundation buffing brush to kind of smooth over. And this is a MAC 170 brush. And a fair amount of lifting off of it onto the brush. You can see here, um, especially around like where I have facial hair, it's really wanting to stick to the hairline. If you don't have facial hair, that could be not as big of a worry. As the tinted sunscreen is drying down, I definitely feel like it's taking on kind of like a powdery effect, which can happen because I believe the active ingredient for the sunscreen filter is titanium dioxide at 13.6%. It can almost get this kind of powdery effect. And that's why sometimes people who have like more normal to dry skin or they're suffering from something like dehydration, they can feel like it looks drying on the skin. Your first ingredient is water, 
Third ingredient is glycerin. Fourth ingredient is alcohol denate. Some people are bothered by the more drying alcohols. I don't care, they don't bother me. I've done my work to prep my skin underneath. And normally when they're added into a kind of product like that, it's to help it dry down. It's to help it perform and look better on the skin. So that doesn't bother me, but with anything like that, if alcohol, fragrance, essential oils bother you, just don't use it. About three fourths way down the ingredient deck, it does have parfums. If fragrance bothers you, then this might not be the best one for you. The fragrance, I did not notice it at first, but it reminds me of, this is not be so specific, but if you've played with fragrance or looked at perfume notes, then you'll know like they talk about how certain scents trigger memories. This makes, the smell makes me think about when I was a little kid and we would go swimming like on vacation my mom would put water wings on me and um water wings always had this very kind of like distinct pull float kind of smell but um yeah this reminds me of water wings as a kid i feel like though as this warms up it's looking better a little bit more of my lisa eldridge elevated glow and crystal nebula apply it just to the high points of my cheeks that, I like that, that, that makes me happy. That's definitely like what I would consider a like chef's kiss kind of moment. So Lisa Eldridge Enlivening Blush in Pink Soap. It's almost like a kind of whipped property to it. I'm just going to proceed with caution because I don't want a lot of color. So I'm just gonna mix it on my hand. It's gonna go over top of that highlight I just put on the back of my hand, which is fine by me. I'm just going to tap it on. And you could definitely use a brush or sponge. I just like using my hands because it's easier. You could definitely build this up to be more of like an intense flush. I think to start, I'm gonna keep that right there. When you're working with your hands with cream and liquid products, it just really, really makes everything look more like skin. I always like to add like the residual blush I have to other parts of my face because I feel like it looks more like real skin. And I feel like using my hands is definitely something I kind of picked up from watching Lisa. Her work, if you're not familiar with her, it's just so beautiful. Um, even when she does more dramatic looks on her models or herself, it always looks like skin. That's something really special. That's something as an artist throughout the years, I've aspired to do. I've always wanted to make every person I work on look like them, but the best version of themselves because Makeup is very individual. It's different for everyone, but I feel like your makeup should really enhance you. You wear your makeup and do your makeup however you want. See where I'm gonna use the Armani Power Fabric in shade number two. I feel like the concealer gave me a little bit more coverage than I was looking for, so I'm just gonna sheer it down. Little brush, I'm loving it. It is the e.l.f. Putty Primer Applicator. This brush is really, really good for foundation application and kind of buffing things out. I'm gonna use the It Bye Bye Pore Loose Powder. I'm gonna be using this Eco Tools Full Powder Brush. I had another one of these, I loved it. It fell apart, it fell apart before I even washed it. Amazon refunded me and I ordered another one and I've washed this one around 15 times since I got it back in March. And it's doing good. I wash all of my brushes the same way. Some of them just don't hold up as well. And it's not consistent between brands. Like some brands, one brush will fall apart, but other ones won't. Um, and I think I've mentioned in my brush video, most of my Mac brushes that are still natural hair that I don't use on camera, I've had those since like 2009, 2010, and they're still going strong. So you know, some brushes just don't make it. Terracotta Light, the Sunkissed Healthy Glow Powder, light and long lasting and zero to natural cool. So it looks like this. And you'll notice I don't always tap off my brush. Like when I go to pick up bronzer, I use this all the time, but you can still see the embossment is almost perfect because when I pick up bronzer and a lot of my products in general, like when some of my girlfriends come over, they like look at my products and they're like, do you even use it? And I'm like, yes, but here's how I pick up products. So. I go like that, press and lift and tap off and build up slowly. 
is a product that I wanted for years and I just never could get my hands on it. From the brand Gosh Copenhagen and this is their eyebrow kit. But I got this when I moved to Canada because at that time I couldn't get it in the US and um, we used to sell this brand here in Canada at Shoppers but then Shoppers stopped carrying it and I think maybe it was either like Rite Aid or Walgreens that started carrying it in the US. I don't know if it's still available there or not, but I know it's still available in Europe. I'm just gonna use this e.l.f. eyebrow duo brush. Going with true Lisa Eldridge fashion. I brush the brows down and then I'll lightly fill them in. So another thing I've been loving, which is fairly new, this is the Essence Volume Stylist Mascara Lash Extension with lengthening fibers. I'm just gonna add a thin coat to my upper lashes on both sides. I'll be right back. Before I do my final step, which is adding lip, I'm gonna go back in with that e.l.f. brush in my little handheld mirror, and I'm just gonna smooth over any areas which are settling. I don't know if this is the concealer or the sunscreen, but right here I'm getting a little patchy. It's not the highlight because I didn't take my highlight up here. My highlight's very much here. I did apply the highlight down the bridge of my nose, and it's odd because up here where the highlight is, it's staying in place. Down here, it's staying in place. But right here on the bridge of my nose, the product's almost completely lifted. I did have a little bit of settling kind of right here on my chin. Which I normally don't get creasing there and sides of my nose. We'll keep playing with it and see how it works. If you watch any of Lisa's videos, you know she is all about kind of perfecting the shape of the lip. I'm gonna use my Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk lip, lip pencil just to kind of even out the shape of my lips. So Lisa Eldridge lipstick in the shade Kitten Mischief, which it looks a little bit more of like a kind of pinky, rosewoody brown. Oh, I really like that. I wanted to completely remove any of that liner that was on my lips, so I just used a little bit of Bioderma and a cotton bud. So I'm gonna go back in with the lipstick again, and I wanna apply it over my lips without anything under, just to see the color again. I really like this color. It's reminding me of a few lipsticks in my collection, so I wanna do a quick comparison. So, there is the Lisa Eldridge Kitten Mischief. This is a limited edition from the last, I think, fall collection with Hermes. This is the shade number 45 Rose Ombre. So this is a little bit more brown of a peachy color, slightly darker. One of the Gucci lipsticks, it's a satin formula, and this is the shade Blaze of Noon. Okay, similar. So this is a little bit more of a ready brown, slightly darker than Kitten Mischief. By Dior, this is the new refillable formula of the Rouge Dior. This is number 219 Rose Montaigne. I don't know. So strength wise, it's a similar intensity to the Lisa Eldridge Kitten Mischief, a little bit more peachy where Kitten Mischief has a little bit more pinkiness to it. And the final shade I wanted to compare to is the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Revolution and Pillow Talk. Pillow Talk is darker and more kind of a pinky plum brown. Lisa Eldridge Kitten Mischief, um, Rouge Hermes in Rose Ombre, Gucci Lipstick in Blaze of Noon, Dior number 219 Rose M something, and then Charlotte Tilbury Pillow. Lisa Eldridge Gloss Embrace in the shade Go Lightly. Over the Kitten Mischief lipstick, it definitely added more of a peachy color. It's very similar to my shirt, but slightly darker. I love how the gloss and the lipstick feel like on their own. They feel really, really nice, but layered together, it's just like cushiony hydration on the lips. So let me remove this. I want to show you the gloss by itself. It go lightly gloss on its own velvet bag with the beautiful kind of like floral pattern that I that came out with her holiday collection last year. I love this bag. And you know, this might sound really odd. I would love this pattern on a chair. Like if you had like a cute like little reading nook or a study, this would be so cute. There's a pattern somewhere. But I like those kind of more like funky, whimsical, kind of moody patterns for like accent pieces of furniture. So I love the bag.
But getting back to the gloss, so this is the Gloss Embrace in the shade Go Lightly. The kind of flush of color that this gives my lips reminds the color that my lip flushes when I get my lip filled. Um, which I kind of like, it just makes things feel fresher. I wanted to do a little check-in. So it is currently about five hours of having this on. You can see I'm shiny. The blush is still intact. Highlight is still there. Um, the sunscreen is getting a little shiny. Compared to when I first applied it, the sunscreen was kind of a little polka dotty. I was getting some settling through here and it's kind of warmed up and melted and faded into the skin. So, um, I'm happy with everything. Oh, and like every mascara I felt like I try, except for like really, really stubborn waterproof mascaras, I did have to clean up a little bit under my eyes, but it struggles with mascara. So I will check in before I call it a night. Hey y'all, it has been about 12 and a half hours. I have, since I applied everything, 12.36 AM, I'm in overhead unflattering light in my living room, but this is how everything looks. Here is my natural skin texture, pores and all. Gloss has worn off. I feel like there's still a hint of blush. The highlight is on. Um, I've gotten kind of shiny around my like T-zone area. I don't feel like the lids have creased. I got a tiny bit of mascara transfer. Brow still look fine. If this was a normal everyday or a work day, I could easily blot, powder, and keep going. Even though the sunscreen has gotten shiny, I feel like I still have a little bit of coverage. So for a sunscreen that I didn't really take extra precaution to prime or set. My opinions from when I first applied it have really changed and I really think this looks beautiful on my skin. I'll continue to test all these products individually with other products and see how they go, but this is our final check-in and I'm gonna wash my face and go to bed. That is the final look trying out the new Lisa Eldridge products. I hope you had fun. I will have all the information listed down below with the Lisa Eldridge products. I assume they are all sold out by now. Um, I know a lot of things sold out when I went to go order, which was the day of the launch. Her products tend to sell out very, very quickly, but they do come back in stock. So stay on the lookout. I have those links on my website. So there will be a link to my website in the description box below this video. So, thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed finally getting to play with these products and giving a little bit of love to one of the makeup artists that has really inspired me throughout the last 10 years of my career. I will see you on the next video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and share it with a friend that you think might enjoy the video as well. I will see you all in the next video. Bye y'all.